All right, y'all. I am back. And it looks like Instagram doesn't want to save the Instagram live videos. So uh, it's not letting me download them and it's not letting them stay on my profile for one reason or another. It works for celebrities and Instagram influencers, but when I want to do it, it's not working. So uh, I guess in the end, you're just going to have this narrated video to work with. And, you know, I tried to have. A secondary video along with it but it's unable to do so uh and maybe i should have just done a regular camera recording of that but it's everything's 2020 in hindsight right ah it's 2020 yeah, it's funny okay where did we leave off we left off talking about community owned business plans so there all of this is just kind of a road map of what I've envisioned with QR clothing brand and what I'd like to, to build with it. And uh, it can be built quicker. Um, it basically can be built on the rate of support from uh, our community, our society. The more people support it, the faster it can be built. Um, and it's just one of those things. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna build it brick by brick and I wanna have full transparency, which is why I'm putting out this video. Um, part of debating on how to put out this video and how to have that transparency and at what time and to what extent and um, is there a rollout with that. Uh, I had a lot of different back and forth about it. And um, my biggest concern is if somebody that has more financial power sees the idea and goes, oh, I'm going to make my version of that because I have the money to build it or do it or whatnot, um, that they're going to do it perverting it. And part of the reason this was all created is because there's there's a lot of um, thought gone into what poverty is and how poverty works and how it is created. And I don't know that somebody trying to mimic this would take that into account it, it would take a lot of the social injustices that we have in our society into account while this is meant to be um, an economic change as well as a change in regards to people being healthier and um, also being able to be smarter and have the the resources to become smarter um, it also has to, a lot to do with um, just the conditions of of our society and social issues uh, in general. So I want to go into that. So I'm going to start a new thing here. I'm going to try and recreate some charts. Um, so first, I'm going to start here with me. Oops, let me change. I didn't mean to use that color. I wanted to start with a white box here. Um, so I'm going to put poverty right here. Okay. And when you have poverty, if it exists and poverty, just so you know, means there's a vast economical difference, there's a vast financial difference between one group of people and another group of people. So if we were to, I, mean, I like to use medieval times um, and the times of knights and all this other stuff, knights, king, castles, um, nobles and peasants. I like to use that as an analogy because a lot of that system still exists today. And uh, I don't know that people really connect that dots of that, but poverty would be all the, um, quote unquote peasants, the people that live in the streets, the people that live in the dirty areas of the kingdom and um then there's tiers that go above it. You know, there's there's people that end up slowly moving their ranks up and eventually having um noble status, which may be today's modern celebrities. Um and then there's actual power figureheads that are even above that, which are probably the more silent, wealthy people in the world. And then you have your kings and and queens and people that rule, um, which um, debatably that that 
person at the very, very top has kind of been broken up in a political standpoint. But when you look at it from a corporate standpoint, it still very much exists. A lot of times there is a king at the top of that kingdom. So in order for poverty to exist, all these other things have to exist. Um, there has to be... There. One person at the top, maybe some executives underneath that, a couple of managers, and then the workers down here. Now, this, there's probably thousands or millions of people in this area um, for a company. Find out many companies have millions of workers, but thousands, vast majority of the company is right here. And this might be more of an actual accurate number. Let me, let me change this to reflect how this really might look. It might be more like proportionate wise. Da, da, da. And maybe da, 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 da. And then the bottom. These people are expendable. Um, they make it to where uh, maybe jobs are not as accessible, so if they want to clip out anybody that complains for it, there's another person in line to take over this job. And these people are able to take majority of the winnings from it. And then there's this other party over here. These guys don't ever have to work. Um, they've, they've been wealthy, they were born wealthy, um, and they still participate in a slavery-like system where they profit off of other people's uh, labor. And they do that by loaning their wealth um, to expand a company's growth. And then they say, well, we're going to take residual income from that. We're going to take a slice of that pie um, for perpetuity, um, basically forever. And um, meanwhile, these are the guys down here in poverty that suffer. They still have to work. They have to. They have no choice. Otherwise, they they become all these people right here that have no homes. They get sick. They die sooner. Um, they don't have health care. They don't have things for their mental health. Um, they, don't, they fall into addictions. Um, it's either this or that, usually. Um, and you have to survive. And the system that's put in place, this, these, this is the game you have to play. Um, or at least we've been told. So poverty to understand that part of poverty um that's kind of a little bit of a diagram to to start thinking about um let's talk a little bit more about the chart though that i'm creating here so poverty um with poverty there is less opportunity there is less opportunity. You don't have as much money to get an education, and um, or maybe you're born into a poverty 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 stricken neighborhood, and the education available to you or the funds allocated to that particular uh, education in that neighborhood are so low. Um, that it's not a quality education. Our kids end up becoming left behind because maybe they're a visual learner or an audio learner or hands-on learner, and that kind of education is not being tailored to them because really to stop for each individual student in a class of 30 and you have to get through a whole curriculum within one school semester's time, that ends up becoming a very unrealistic thing uh, if you have to stop and look for this individual learner and this individual learner. So basically teachers are just ranked on whether or not they're able to identify what the majority of their class's learning style is and whether or not they're able to get the majority of their class to pass. They don't, they're not ranked on how many failures they have in the class. And honestly, I don't know that it's really counted against them how many kids they just have to fall by the wayside. Um, but in poverty stricken neighborhoods, it's absolutely, um, less opportunity in, in regards to education, as well as funds to get a really good quality education. Now, you may argue that student loans um, can help you get an education here or there, but um, when you're off to a bad start from the very beginning, it is very hard um, to try and um, 
build yourself up academically to be accepted by the top tier education um, and the, the highest quality of education to really, really break out of, um, of your, your economical, your economic condition. And um, in your education, you're probably not taught about finance, so you're going to be highly susceptible to poverty because you're not going to understand the power of the money, the little money that you do get. Um, I guarantee you that most people in poverty that are working um, lower class jobs and they are struggling, but they still have, you know, their addictions that help them go throughout life. They don't realize that that addiction not only is crippling their health and going to give them expensive consequences on the rear end of, of life, on the end game of life, um, as far as like medical is concerned and all that stuff. Um, but I doubt they realize that that particular addiction could be traded for the opportunity to break out of poverty, um, at least for their, the next generation to come. And, and really, when you become a parent, you're doing it all for your kids, hopefully, and not for yourself, um, especially if you're complaining. <clears throat> so less opportunity ends up creating crime. That is a fact. Um, and... It is not exclusive to race. It is it's not exclusive to many things other than um, people that are susceptible to poverty. It's desperation, really, um, to try and get an opportunity to make, um, to get out of a hopeless situation such as poverty. If you don't know about finance, you think this is the only option and it's either going to be this, me or them us or them kind of deal, you end up uh, becoming desperate and willing to risk a lot of things. Um, if people didn't have, if people could make an honest living and make a good living and they didn't have to risk their freedom and they didn't have to jeopardize, um, in a lot of cases, their, their health and their life, um, and gamble with that just to make it by, to get by. Um, I think that they would, they would absolutely take the the opportunity to do things the I guess a safer way and the more uh, for sure way. But when that's not um, when they don't know that that's available to them, when people don't know that that's available to them, they are susceptible to becoming desperate, and and that's where crime comes from. Um, crime leads to incarceration. Oh, I am spelling that terribly <laughs> a lot of teachers out there just cringe he's going to talk about education he can't spell in car separation and just so you know guys i don't know everything i don't i'm just again a creative person that used law of attraction to try and solve for a problem in society and this is a suggestion that i hope gets in the hands of people and they can see it and we can talk about it we can open that discussion and um from there, we can decide if it's a viable solution or if it needs to be, you know, uh, tailored or, or adjusted. So crime leads to incarceration. So I want to talk about incarceration a little bit. If you go back to poverty and how that system is set up, it kind of seems like slavery because if our wages uh, are capped and we are only getting very, very subtle increases, but majority of the profits from our labor go to wealthy people, uh, it, it does seem a lot like slavery and like the general population is cattle, regardless of where you fall into the working class, whether you're higher up on the totem pole or lower on the totem pole, profits of your labor are, for the most part, being traded and sold. And um, if you look at incarceration, these people are also um, having to work and in, in many cases, and when they work, it is pennies on the dollar. It is the cheapest labor. It is, in, in all comparisons, it's, it's practically free labor. They had to throw some kind of change out there per hour for people to make, so it doesn't, it is an explicit sla slavery, excuse me, but it is absolutely slavery because of this right here. When there's incarceration, there are reduced there's reduced income. Or family sets. Families. OK. 
okay, there's one less person with a job making money, or if they do have a job in prison, they're making slave wages. They're making a couple quarters an hour, maybe, or maybe a dollar or two an hour, and that is nothing when when it costs, um, you know, X amount of dollars for milk. It ends up becoming um, to where this person could work 16, an incarcerated person could work all the working hours of the day, 18 hour days, and it still probably wouldn't even equivocate to the lowest paying job of the working class. Um, it is, it is um, immoral and it is wrong and it just further cripples reduced income families, which goes back full cycle over here. It creates even more of this, even more poverty. And so there's less opportunity for those children. And those children are, have to see people on TV having these nice things and fancy things and these sitcoms with these families that have normal homes and they have all this opportunity and they live in this uh, pipe dream that, oh, all I got to do is be a good kid and go to school and then I get a good job and then I get a family and blah, blah, blah. And that's, that's not necessarily... Um, uh the the environment that is reality for them and then so it could cause desperation to try and get to something like that for their own children for themselves um and so this is kind of a cycle that goes on and in incarceration there is less opportunity here because there's not really a whole lot of education that's happening for these incarcerated people so when they get out of um, of jail or prison and um, they're put back into the working force they don't really have skill sets um, and they're limited of what jobs they can do their votes been taken away from them their ability to be a functional person in society is almost completely stripped from them so i mean we punish them with time but we're also taking away opportunity with this current system and it's it's like you don't even want these people to be rehabilitated. It's not for rehabilitation. Um, there's a song by Big, Big Boy from Outcast where he says incarceration without rehabilitation really doesn't mean shit. And, and really it, it doesn't. It doesn't solve anything. It's not, a, it's not anything um, that stops crime. If anything, it keeps everybody distracted. And it's just another layer of saying, well at least you aren't in this situation. So just take whatever situation, wherever you fall in the hierarchy of the capitalist world, wherever you fall in that, you need to just be thankful for your blessings. And really that's not taking care of a community. That's that's just like the classroom and the teacher leaves behind some failed students. And this, I think fail's a bad analogy because these people aren't failing. They're, they're in a system that's set up to make them fail. Um, because if there's a bunch of people at the bottom that are desperate, um, they'll always be in line for the jobs for the people that don't want to take the bullshit of being on the very bottom. So it's, it's an interesting, interesting cycle to break down. And um, because of this being a truth, uh, I believe that the educational content that we create should be provided also to people in prison and so they can learn job skills. So when they, they leave and they've done their time and they've been rehabilitated and they've they spent their time learning um, techniques and skills. Out, oh, can we see? Oh, 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 oh. I'll hang out with you in a little bit, I promise. Go, out. Oh. Oh. Sheesh, man, she does not like me talking in here. She really is like, always wanted to be a part of the conversation. Um, I would like the education to be available to them so they can join companies that are community-owned businesses that aren't going to be prejudiced against somebody if they're this, that, and the other. Um, and I think there needs to be maybe a strike system of, of whether or not you betray a community-owned business. Maybe you're not allowed to work for a community-owned business or um, it's limited to what role you can play if you, um, if you create uh, crimes and corruption against these things that work for the community. But um, initially, I'd like there to be an opportunity for these people. Um, saying that you're a felon and you can't get this job now, uh, that's that's wild to me. 
how do you expect these people to ever turn around their lives if there's no opportunity on the other end to do so? You're trapping them. And so, uh, yeah, I, I would like this thing that I am trying to put out into the world to also affect the system, not only to eliminate poverty, but it also to solve it on both ends. So I want to provide it for these people and I want it to provide it for these people. And um, I really want as well people to hold the system that incarcerates people responsible and say, hey, you need to offer this kind of education to them. They need the ability to have better income for their families. And if you're going to have them um, go over here into labor, they need to be able to have actual paying jobs um, to provide for their family while they're incarcerated. And um, it's just, it's fair. And this is a particular system that we need to break. And they think that people just do this just because they're they're wilding out or they're crazy or they're just it's symptomatic to their culture and there's some racist people that think it has to do with with what race you are and how this that and the other no this is this is a game set up for people to fail and, and only a few people to win and this is actual clarity of what it is so um that being said takes me to another point um I might be spelling this word wrong because I don't have a reference to it in front of me, but reparations. Reparations. I'm sorry if I'm misspelling that, guys. Uh, I believe in reparations, and I believe they should be a thing. This whole uh, thing that I'm trying to create, it, it defies the concept of slavery, and it absolutely embraces the thought of equality, true equality, academic uh, from a knowledge, from a financial, um, from a loving standpoint, an opportunity standpoint, um, it's, it, it is absolutely screaming equality. So one of the things that I believe are in order of reparations, there was a promise made and uh, has not been made good on. And so I would like to have um, reparations be some of the income that comes from this gets divided uh, amongst a couple different categories. So we have reparations right up here. I think the creators, creators, um, and as well as the business. Oh, shit, I can't even spell business. Business. The business itself. Um, and employees. All of these people should be able to tap into profits. And the reparations, um, the actual math behind it and details behind it um, and how that works and how it gets distributed, thats it's a concept that I'm throwing out there that I, I would like all businesses to start thinking about um, putting a portion of, of whatever profits they make into um, fulfilling the excuse me fulfilling the commitment of reparations and if you haven't noticed by now this is all putting um, our uh, a societal problem on the shoulders of us as a community rather than trying to rely on politicians to come up with a um, a way to solve our problems for us um, and rather than wait for somebody to just come along and fix all our issues I'm, I'm presenting ideas of how maybe we can problem solve for ourselves but reparations are, are mandatory, it's not even optional. Um, and if you have questions about that, you, you probably should look up Black Wall Street and um, just see that, that, that black people, um, African Americans, were not um, allowed to build a function in society. They were, they were, um, they've been constantly under attack and constantly oppressed. And um, their success has been um, 
tampered with. And I think we need to start solving for that. And we definitely need a better system and one they can thrive in and, um, and, and where we all can thrive in is just equality altogether. But uh, lost time definitely needs to be made up for and um, economic hardships definitely need to be made up for. Those are facts. Those happened. They were done. And we need to, we need to do something about it. So the reparations could be a timed thing. Um, I don't think that, um, equality means reparations for forever, just for one group of people. Cause you know, a couple, however much time passed, eventually it becomes, um, unequal again and, and the scales become unbalanced. So I think, um, there, maybe we should look at what was promised um, and try to make good on that first in regard inflation and um, and I definitely encourage people of uh, the black community and business world to create a nonprofit uh, structure that can kind of facilitate this and make sure that families are um, that this this uh, profit is actually uh, being distributed with full transparency. Um, that way everybody sees it. Uh, it's out in the open and um, there's no question for shit to cause conspiracies and this, that, and the other, and all that headache. Um, but it's absolutely doable to have reparations. Um, creators, uh, people that are helping make this thing a, a reality and that um, contribute their talents, I think they should have a share of profits. The business itself obviously needs to have something to help it grow and expand and adapt to technology as that advances, as well as um, be able to grow and add other um, parts of the business to it. And then um, the employees as well. And I didn't mean to put them last, that this is no order of things except for uh, to say that they're all equally necessary. So as much as I want to have employees profit share and the business profit share. I want reparations to profit share, have a share of the profits and same with creators. So uh, the employees would be the people making the business run, doing the day-to-day -day functions. Um, and uh, yeah, I think they should have a share of the profits and that should be it. I don't think that some party over here that just has um, some finances should be able to get involved in this and share off of people's hard work just because they have financing. I think the people themselves should finance um, something like this to bring it into life. So uh, that in a nutshell is what I'm trying to create. So let's talk about creators. Artists, like, this is abroad. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even think I can just use artists as a category because I think creator slash artists will end up being the whole thing. So let's just say illustrators, right? Illustrators. Illa. Illa. I'm going to put an A and an I here just in case I'm <laughs> spelling one wrong. Not wrong, but I'm not right. Illustrators, um, writers, animators, musicians. What am I doing? Sorry, guys. I'm trying to. Musicians. There's there's a lot of different talent that I want to work with for our creators and this maybe give you an idea of if you fall into one of these things or maybe you are a creative type and you you could think of a way that you can help contribute it'd be great um, illustrators uh, can help us put visual content um, they can help us create the things that will um, not only be present on the clothing but uh, that that we sell and profit share with, but it will also be present on the education 
so they can help contribute and build out this education that we use and we give pass on to our children and our grandchildren and really our wisdom our human knowledge right so let's say you go into a class you're going to take this one particular subject class 101 whatever it is and before you take the class you figure out what is your learning style so there's seven different learning types right uh, there could be a initial quiz that asks you several questions that deduce how you comprehend information the best and uh, some of these quizzes are already online you could say like what's my learning style but we could definitely have the most intricate version of that get the best of the best minds together to put, be put together and, and create that um, and really have it as accurate as possible so you deduce what your learning style is and then two you start the class right when you start the class you have an option you you get to pick your learning style. So maybe you're an auditory learner and you listen through sound. That's my like little beeps of sound and the waves are the sound waves, right? Um, maybe that sounds. So you'll maybe do your lecture in podcast form. Dyslexia, go away. Podcast form. Then maybe there's people that need the lecture they need to have an instructor break it down and so the lecture they could just watch a video on demand right play button there um, or maybe you're a person that actually has to be in a classroom with people asking questions like we talked about earlier so you're in VR these are this is our glasses but like that little right there that's the video on the glasses <laughs> so maybe you go into vr for your class um then there's other people that maybe need stories and so story um telling i don't know how to draw a story let's use the action thing is that how it looks or they clap it and then got some stripes or something um so storytelling oh, there's always like a clacker thing right there right storytelling um could be cartoons it could be animations um it could be music uh, and their writers can help create that part of it and vr obviously you can have a live instructor so teachers won't go out of a job with this they'll, they'll have another way of just how they teach a classroom and they'll probably have an ability to make more money um, if they're profit sharing as a teacher rather than getting a capped salary so that means um, uh, they'd be compensated better for really really caring about their job um, and and they'll really want to make sure as many people um, are successful as possible uh, lecture people um, they will you know be able to get a compensated to be the best of the best um, and uh, that can be uh, a, almost like a competitive landscape where they can compete with each other by being successful at teaching and that needs to be a competitive sport in my opinion because we need better and better teachers we need people more and more successful about it that's just um, that seems like a good idea um, but not in the sense of where they can't, um, where they, they try to block each other's success. So that is definitely not what I want. Podcast um, also can be uh, either of the two. It could be teachers. It could be lectures. Um, it could be somebody that just uh, has dialogue like we're having right now and talking about a complex concept and just breaking it down in a way for people that really need a lengthy, fleshed out uh, explanation. Um, and it also could uh, open up to for group discussions because uh, podcasts now allow people to call in and contribute to episodes and 
Um, it could be helpful like that. And also it could be real life examples. Um, I documented myself quitting smoking and gave that as a real life example of education that people can use to help them quit as well. So sky's the limit with where that kind of stuff can go. Um, and then song. Now this also plays into story like we mentioned, but song, man, we are good at memorizing song lyrics, aren't we? It's supposed to be a note, but I don't, I don't know if it's a real note. Um, I'll also do this, it's a real note, right? Um, schoolhouse Rock, again, like that kind of stuff. We, If you want to be a new up-and-coming rapper, um, rather than having the conversation of the skill set of rapping and the, the smoothest or wittiest you can be, um, as far as boasting is concerned um, and, and bragging is concerned and being dominant that way, the person that is the wisest teacher and gives the most information or is the wisest on a subject or can really um, discuss and elaborate on a subject or even develop a subject, um, that there's a whole nother arena uh, of things that, that open up and a whole nother scale of how we can rank people um, and uh, songs are one of those things that can pass knowledge, they can do the storytelling, they can um, definitely have conversations and discussions and are necessary in society. Songs are absolutely um, a, a thing that we can use here and I would like to see um, people that are up becoming rappers take a college course, learn the best they can of that course, and then recite it and, and try to break it down into lyrical form. Um, that way somebody can get it catchy, stuck in their head, and they can memorize it. So when they need to go test, they can reference their memorization of it. And it's just one more tool set that can uh, show comprehension of subject matter. Uh, and yeah, there's room for all the different learning styles. Like, oh, let's hold on. Here's an important one and one that's very relevant today. Apps and games. Yeah, how do you draw an app in a game? I'm just going to draw a... <laughs> I'm a gamer and I can't draw a controller, so I'm going to just draw a controller with buttons and directional pad. All right, apps and games. Let's think about that for a second. So if you talk to most people that that put their hands on and create some of the best content, billions of dollars worth of content. Um, one of the most expensive game series in the world, I think, is um, Grand Theft Auto. Several million, hundred million dollars put into that. Um, the people that the voice actors have ex expressed their complaints with that. Uh, the game may sell sell billions upon billions of dollars, but um, is is not necessarily kicking money back to these people that got a cap salary and got commission work to help build this thing. And um, so all you developers, voice actors, writers, storyboard artists, 3D developers, animators, et cetera, et cetera, that are working off commission or cap salaries, there is an opportunity here for you guys to get together and create stuff that uh, you own profit share in and also um, can feel good because it's benefiting education and humanity. You can really put your talents to an ultimate use and and, um, and really feel like uh, what you do is, is making a difference and is important and is necessary um, outside of the realm of just entertainment. But apps and games, definitely, we can make things where they're learning experience um, and they teach teach us as we go through, again, stories or maybe repetition is necessary, um, whatever. Um, but there's there's definitely things that we can tap into. So um, that's for the creator side of it. Um, let's talk about, lastly, how the clothing... brand works. So there's QR codes 
on the clothing, right? And when you scan it, um, if so let's say you're bringing this concept up to somebody and you want to introduce them to it and you want to show them, oh, hey, there's this really cool, like, this cool idea that this guy put in this world. He's trying to see if he can make it happen and uh, maybe create some changes um, and, and create new systems to replace old ones that don't really work for us in modern times. And uh, so you want to have somebody look at the content closer, they can scan a QR code and it could be available um, on the clothing. And I'm thinking about at some point, um, if I can ever afford to do this, to include um, a, a card that has um, the little chip reader. So when you hold it up to a phone, it actually brings up information rather than having to scan something with a camera and worry about um, I don't know. I just, I like the idea of somebody being able to keep a card on it and sharing the idea with it that way. So it, it markets itself in that department. Um, it relies on collaboration. Um, it relies on collaborations. I want to work as a team with people, um, which means if an artist decides to work with us, they could go to our website um, and they could go to a section of it that has needed assets and they can look and go, okay, well, here's a list of all these different needed assets. I'm going to just start here with one of them and I'm going to contribute this asset and um, just do whatever I can for it. And that asset could be just one portion of one particular part of the education that's just trying to create some sort of illustration. They send that image in and that image will be used for that education um, and there will be an agreement made between the company and the artist that that um, submission that they gave is, is now going to be owned by the company so the company continue to use it, but if it ever uses it in a monetary way, whether it's monetary gain, that artist is compensated and they have um, residual income from that. So if we repurpose the art and put it on a t-shirt, for example, and sell the t-shirt um, and sell a million of these, or we profit a million dollars off the shirt sales, um, and let's say, I'm not saying that we're going to do exact 50-50 because obviously there's a bunch of other people sharing in the profits, but whatever the percentage is, they get that percentage of the million dollars and we want to make that um, a, a fair. And um, the more contributions obviously an artist makes to helping this grow, um, the better they're the more residual income that they're going to have coming in, right? Because they have more opportunities to have um, their art on merchandise that can sell. The more chips you have in the game, the better. Um, <clears throat> it also works mutually beneficial between the company and the artist because the artist may already have a fan base and they, um, they can share their fan base by saying, hey, we did a collaboration with this company, um, with, with QR Clothing Brand. Um, if you could support it, you're also supporting me as an artist as well as a, a company that has good intentions and uh, is trying to do something good in the world. And as well as our audience, can, we can expose the artist um, to our audience and let our audience be aware of this artist. Hey, there's this talented person. Look at some of the beautiful things that they can create. What the, the biggest part about this is I want artists to absolutely be inspired enough to take their art and build something with it. If it means building their own clothing brand and having the people that really like their art style, their fan base going in there and supporting them, then great. Uh, I want them to be able to do that. If it means them um, getting together with other artists and other creators and creating a show together that they own as creatives rather than relying on finances, financers, they can they can pull together their own resources and make something for themselves. I want that to happen as well. And I think a lot of the QR clothing brand audience um, and supporters and people that wear the brand and care about the brand also could be those people looking to start community owned businesses themselves. And they may need help from these artists and creative types. And this is a way for them to kind of showcase the, the artists to showcase their work to these other potential uh, business leaders um, to, to collaborate even further. And it's just a mutual um, beneficial thing. So uh, 
collaborations uh, is another part of it. And um, yeah, I don't know what details I'm leaving out, but this I believe is the the best overview I can give with such a short amount of time to give it. Um, and it, it was definitely further details and I would love people to ask questions, um, and, and have me further clarify areas that need clarification. I definitely want to open a discussion for the possibilities of this and who, who would like to help and see it become a thing. And if at any point during this discussion, you have decided, I absolutely want to support, um, these efforts, I want you to follow us on social media. Um, that's the best place to start. Um, it's at quit rich is one of the main profiles for season one, right? And then at QR clothing brand. I would like you to go follow those two things. Um, and as time goes on, we can show these followers how um, they can support um, further. And definitely check out the website, uh, currently quitrich.com. You can also go to qrclothingbrand.com, but that really just is a redirect right now to quitrich.com. We are currently um, re relaunching the websites in a much more coherent fashion. And um, while I would have loved to wait to do this explanation until that was completed, um, given the epidemic and um, knowing how short time is really, and not really knowing how much time any of us have um, in life and nothing's promised, I kind of want to just get this information out there first. And, um, and yeah, uh, I try to be as, as complete as possible. The last thing I want to talk about is stimulus. What's stimulus? God, I think I even have that wrong. I think it might be an I up here. <laughs> Stimulus. Anyways, stimulus money. I just want everybody to understand right now that it's almost like um, if you look at it, if you were the person in the wealthy, non-working class, and you're looking at the working class, and you're going, oh, well, any minute they could really create a system, but they're so dependent on this particular system. Uh, we'll use their own their own. Uh, disc that they like to throw. Like, if we give out too much uh, free food, they're just going to become dependent on it. Or if we give them welfare, they're just going to become lazy and dependent on it. Okay, well, they they look at the system like we're going to be dependent on it regardless. So if we they give us a two trillion dollar stimulus package um, to try and help with our day to day things, we're going to be so sucked into our consumerism. And, consumer behavior that we always have, that if it is supplemental income, if this is, um, I'm sorry, not supplemental, but excess income, if this is bonus income, our go-to is going to be to spend it. What can we spend it on? All, all of a sudden, now we've got our PlayStation 5 paid for. Or all of a sudden, now we got this, that, and the other. Or we can do this, that. You know, we can do extra things with the money. Well, if we took, if we have $1,200, and we took 200 of it, and we put it to I think I'm spelling that wrong too. Victim, I wish I had auto correct was for writing, huh? Um, for victims of COVID, okay, people affected by it um, that are, are struggling right now. If we each put $200, we're, we're going back into like supporting families that maybe this $1,200 does not do shit for them. Okay, and that's that. That is a reality that is happening right now. And our first order of business as a community to take care of our community um, would be to do something like like this. Um, and then, so that's a thousand dollars left, right? And then, if we were to take another two hundred and um, and put it into 
an idea, like a nonprofit idea that's going to try and change our system, like the educational idea for um, free school, we could absolutely have enough money to put in a structure in place, especially if we get um, technological insight from businesses that thrive off community in the first place, like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and other communities like DeviantArt and um, uh, Reddit and uh, Discord, all these different community portals. Um, the benefit from all of us being community-based and community-minded, if we could get them to kind of help us create this system, I think we could actually uh, make it a thing for with this amount of money if we contribute that. That would leave us with $800, and we would probably have to scrounge and make that stretch as far as possible, but um, it's doable. Ask anybody that's lived in poverty $800 a month, there is a way to do it. It's just not ideal and not fun. Uh, but if we just do it for what a month or two before we get another stimulus check added to us, we could forever change our destiny in regards to fixing a broken system for our kids, our grandkids, uh, the future of humanity in general and ourselves. Um, we have the opportunity uh, to really make something better in the future. And if anything, this whole epidemic has just been evidence that our system is uh, broken. Uh, companies can't go without a month or even a couple weeks without being, without running, without falling apart. That just shows that all the profits that get distributed to the wealthy people, some of that profit should be for the business, right? It should be right here, making sure that it can stay afloat. But it's a constant siphoning of the wealth uh, and the, the benefits of a business that, that keep um, safety nets like that in, in, in place. And so we rely on the government for, for safety, nets, safety nets. But when we get a um, political party that drains all these safety nets and cl shuts them down, um, and then something like this catastrophic happens, uh, it just creates a, a big recipe for disaster, and it really shows you how fragile the system uh, can be. So we need to definitely put something stronger in place that works for everybody um, and uh, has equality at the forefront. Um, I would love to have a discussion on it, guys, and thank you for being attentive. I know it's been a long video, um, a long series of videos, and I hope that it gets heard. I hope that it, it doesn't go unheard, and uh, if anything, uh, even if you have heard all this and, and just still have your doubts or just don't believe that it's it can be a thing, um, I hope you at least saw somebody try to challenge what was told to him to just accept as fact. I hope you see somebody that, that challenged that and tried to think um, creatively on how we could um, um, pull together our resources and really put the power back into the hands of the people. Um, knowledge is in fact our power and it should be available to all people. So um, peace and love.